Rake, welcome to Great Fimber. I'm Miss Furman. I'm the Early Years Foundation stage, stage Reception Teacher here. So I teach Green Class, which is the first class that the children arrive in when they arrive here at Great Fimber. So I'm just going to show you around our environment today. When the children first come into school, they have a allocated peg with their photo and their name on. So we do home visits during the summer term before the children start school so that we can say hello and get to know them a little bit and we take their pictures so they've got some a familiar photo when they first arrive. So here is the entrance to our classroom to green class you can see that our current cohort have done self-portraits. We try to get the children to do this every year as early as possible so that the space feels like it's theirs and that they're part of that um, inclusive community. So as the children come into the school, into the classroom, um, they self-register. So here we have our 10 frames. Um, so they are, they are there for the children to self-select their photo and pop them onto that frame. And as part of our maths routine in the morning, we count how many children are here, how many children are in school and how many aren't. So that's all part of that early maths awareness and maths in a real life context. Here we have at the moment our seating plan, so we wouldn't necessarily have this at the beginning of the term, but it just helps the children know where they're expected to sit on the carpet. Here's our carpet area, so it's quite a cosy space for them to have story and we sometimes do yoga here, we have our maths and our phonics inputs, so our, our short sessions with the teacher or the TA, and it also doubles up as our construction area or as part of our construction area so we have a lovely big space for the children to build and at the moment we have a real interest in mini beasts or bugs so the children have been accessing lots of the um, provocations based around this interest and using the space to create lots of um, lovely creative bug hotels and um, lots of different environments so we also have lots of open-ended resources, so lots of wooden um, blocks and we have some small rail buildings there, train track and you can see we've got some just open-ended material and tubes that the children use in all sorts of creative ways. Over here I just want to quickly show you our phonics scheme. So we follow the Jolly Phonics phonics scheme, which um, some of you may have heard of. So it's a lovely, active, creative scheme, lots of singing and dancing and lots of making things as well as the reading and the writing. And um, yeah, the children, the current cohort are really enjoying their, their learning through, the, through Jolly Phonics. So we have um, our phonics wall there. So as we learn a sound, we pop it up onto the wall and um, the children enjoy looking at those and making up words. So we have two things in our environment that are consistent all the way through. We have our writing shelves where the children can find all of their writing resources that they need. They can take these to other areas in the classroom so they don't have to just write near here, um, but we find that it's important for the children to have those core resources and to know exactly where they are all year. So there's a whole range of writing resources which are labelled because we expect the children to access their own resources and to put them away again themselves. Um, we try to encourage independence as much as possible and self-reflection, so it's an important part of that process for us. And we also have our maths shelves, which are on the other side of the classroom, which again have all sorts of maths resources um, that the children can access and then use as they need to during their play. We have two long sessions of play and explore during our um, school day. So we try to aim for at least half of the time that the children are here, they're engaging in open-ended learning, so open-ended play, facilitated by the adults with lots of modelling um, and quality interactions to make sure that it's really meaningful learning time. This is at the moment it's set up as a home corner um, and we tried to have as many sort of real life objects in there as possible. At the moment, we do change the home corner, so we change it in, in line with the seasons. At the moment, we've got some autonomous things out there. Um, but soon it will be time for the children to get out their Christmas decorations and decorate their home because we, we let the children do that. And um, that is always quite entertaining, seeing how um, they decorate their home with the Christmas tree and tinsel. It tends to look a little bit OTT, but it looks lovely and festive, so we're, we're looking forward to that. Above here is our gallery, so each child has a space um, with a, a photo frame on, a, a painting frame, 
that they can then choose their, their piece of their work. So it might not necessarily be, be a written piece of work, it might be a photo of something they've created to put in their special space. So that's really lovely for the children to be able to um, show their friends and to, to use those to reflect back on. Over here at the moment, we have this driving unit set up as a investigation area. So the children are very interested in dark and light. So we have lots of um, blocks with transparent panels and torches um, and mirrors, as well as natural objects there for them to have a look at and to explore. This will change with the children's interests over the course of the year. We have more small world resources here. So we have another large carpet space for the children to use. Um, so they tend to bring all the things to the carpet and create all sorts of lovely kingdoms. We've got our dinosaurs there, um, doll's house. So sometimes we have a whole dinosaur kingdom created on this carpet, which is really lovely. And on the other side here, so facing the other side of that carpet, we have um, more loose parts, so open-ended um, resources for the children to use. So at the moment we're following a theme of once upon a time or I wonder what happened once upon a time and the children have used these to create all sorts of lovely um, fairy tale language and lots of lovely um, fairy tales and stories. At the moment this area is being used as a book nook so we've got a lovely cosy corner for the children to sit. We've got a real interest in reading this year which is great. Um, we've got our puppet basket there so we have traditional puppets so nursery rhyme puppets. We've got our um, bar bar black sheep. Um, I think we've got a bus for wheels on the bus there but also Gruffalo and our trusty Pete the cat um, who helps us with our, with our maths learning. Here's our maths working rules. So this is what we use with the, to um, show the children what number we're learning and they access this themselves. So as you can see, we've been learning number five. So the children there made a collection of objects around the classroom that reflected their understanding of number five and we made our high five handprints. So we very much refer to this um, working wall whilst we're learning. Um, on the other side of our book nook at the moment, we have um, resources linked to traditional tales and children have made their own traditional tale characters there um, to reflect our theme. Our themes in green class uh, are very much child led, so they're quite open ended and um, we follow the children's interests as much as we can. So I'm just going to take you now outside to our outside area. Oh, before I do, I'll just show you um, talking about our theme at the moment. As I said, it's what happened once upon a time. So we pose that question to the children and you can see some of their ideas here. Um, and this is where we, what we base our planning on and our provocations and activities for the children. So we try to make sure that it reflects what they're interested in. So lots of interesting castles um, and princesses there. Also here we have our, our memory book, so our scrapbook. So each week we take photos and observations of the children and we put them on tapestry for the parents to see and we put them onto our learning journey walls so obviously we've only just finished the second week of term of this half term so as the half term progresses we add photos and annotations of the children's learning which is lovely for the children to learn to reflect on and to see it's um, wonderful for them to point themselves out and talk about what they're doing and then at the end of each half term we pop it into our scrapbook and again the children access this quite frequently and they love to look back and look back over the course of the year and um, reflect on on what they've been learning and how much they've grown so out now to our outdoor learning space and during our play and explore so our three free flow sessions the children have access to the indoor environment and the outdoor environment at all times again we do have lots of open-ended materials so you can see our crates there which have led to a whole array of lovely creative play so we've had buses we've had castles um, forest trails all sorts of things can be created with those crates and the children really love using those there isn't there isn't a day when they are not used for every second of our plan explore sessions at the moment we've got a real interesting construction so we have some construction provocations there and some wooden blocks that the children um, again use every day 
and we encourage the children to access things themselves so they choose things themselves but also to tidy away themselves and this is always a real challenge for the children to pop these back um, so they all fit so they, they love solving that puzzle and working as a team over here we have our giant pneumocon hoops uh, numbered logs and also stepping stones so the children can access those to build their own trails and also lots of other act um, resources that they can choose themselves take over to the tough trays which we always leave a couple empty so that the children can explore their own interests and they can learn in their own way over here we have again the construction um, theme so the children have a real interesting construction so we have um, some small world play for them and here are our small world resources so we have they're all labeled so the children can access those and tidy them away um, quite easily and it's quite empty at the moment so the children can pop those out themselves um, we usually have a castle at the top of of this structure so I'm sure that will appear again in the morning and here's a out today Ch children have been doing some painting so going with our once upon a time um, provocation they have been making their own fairy tale characters and um, yes and adding lots of colorful paint to them we have water out for children um, at all times, so warm water at the moment as it's quite chilly as the weather is turned. So we have all sorts of water um, activities there for them, water resources there for them. So we have the pipe stands, the tubes. Um, all sorts of stretchy tubes and hoses there and there's there's our water tray we have a um an outdoor role play structure as well so again it's quite open-ended at the moment it's being used as a construction cafe stroke shop so our budding builders out here quite often come to the counter for a cup of coffee or a pancake um and the children are enjoying exploring that space we do put some provocation, some activities out for the children. So if they do want to do a more structured activity, we've got it there. But again, um, they're able to use those in whatever way they, they please. So some of these orange stones we used in our construction area for pancakes. So we had lots of orange and purple pancakes this, this week in our, in our classroom. And again, we've got um, more construction resources there. We ha do have a table out here because we do f tend to find that if the children want to write, they do like to sit sometimes and do so, but we don't confine writing just to that table. We have a whiteboard, we have chalks that they can use on the floor, um, chalkboards, so there's lots of writing and mark making that goes on out here. This is one of the favourite resources of the children. These are our wooden, our wooden cubes, so they're hollow, big hollow structures, which are very simple, but again, the children love creating all sorts of different structures with those um, they climb on them they jump off them they hide in them they crawl through them they crawl under them so yeah they're they're a lovely resource and they're, they're used very frequently we've just got a dinosaur provocation in the corner there um, we have a real interest in dinosaurs this year as well so that is our outside area